Hey, Nikki, can you do the intro now? I'm about to uh, publish my video. No, no, I'm too busy. What do you mean you're too busy? I've got stuff I need to do. What? Yeah. Come on, come on, let's do the video. So what, just take five minutes, two minutes of your time. Okay. Hello, thank you for watching my own devices. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share it. Dave will be very happy if you do. Enjoy. When I was a young man, I had a pretty large record collection. You know, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 albums. And I remember whenever I moved home, you know, or moved to, you know, to another apartment, I had to lug these plastic milk crates, like everyone, full of full of records, and they were really heavy, and had to load them into the car or the truck and carry them up and down stairs, and then you had to find a place to put them. And uh, I don't know if you ever experienced or have seen pictures of, of uh, record collections making you know, shelving units completely collapse under their weight. When the digital compact disc came out in the 80s and, and started getting popular, really popular in the 90s, one of its appealing benefits was that it took up less space and there was there were light more lightweight. And you know, you found that you could fit many more CDs into the same space that that records would take up. I was wondering what the actual physical difference is between a a vinyl record and a CD in terms of weight and volume and if I could put a number to it. I'm now going to compare the weight and volume of both formats, and, but I'm not going to uh, discuss or debate which format is superior. Uh, I enjoy both and appreciate their strengths and weaknesses. No one can deny that the storage of physical media such as records, CDs, and tapes is a serious matter which can become burdensome when collections reach a particular size and physical mass. Here we have 10 standard old style single record albums, not gatefolds or 180 gram vinyl. They weigh around five pounds. And here we have five pounds of single CDs in standard jewel cases, stacked. And that amounts to 22 CDs in total. So going by this, more than twice the number of CDs weigh the equivalent of 10 record albums, or about 120% more. Next, let's look at volume. Obviously, these take up space in your home. And I wanted to compare the amount of cubic inches records and CDs require. Those 10 LPs that I weighed previously occupy 216 cubic inches of space. And here's the math. The closest I could get in CDs to the equivalent volume of space of the records was 220 cubic inches, and that is 20 CDs. So, going by these numbers, I can confidently declare that CDs take about approximately half the amount of weight and volume of a record album. One of the other nice features of CDs is how easy they are to clean. And if you're like me and lots of other people, you would use the old hot breath and sleeve technique to get any kind of smudges or debris off of them. One of the reasons I believe the vinyl records were basically abandoned by most of the population was that they require a certain amount of care and maintenance to keep them clean and playable. And, but the thing is that Vinyl records could last several lifetimes if looked after properly. I don't recall having any interest when I was a young teen, when I started collecting records of keeping them clean or maintaining their, uh, their integrity. I, I'm pretty sure I, I abused some of those early records pretty badly. I believe it was around the late 1970s I heard about a product called Disc Washer and this was supposed to make cleaning records very simple and easy. Uh, they said that this, this cushion pad had directional bristles that got down deep inside the grooves of a record. 
what you did was you you removed the, the bottle of fluid here and you put a few drops let me open it up here you get a few drops and you run it along the the front edge here and line up with the arrow there and using the heel of the, the bottom of the bottle you kind of spread out the, the, the drops of liquid and I think this works best on a direct drive table you get a bit more torque there and then you carefully lightly place it down on the surface of the record with the wet edge down on the record you let it go down a few times let it go around a few times and then you slowly rotate the brush here, kind of rock it around to the dry edge. And this is an old record. I don't know how dirty it is. I've never played it before. It was in the garage. It belonged to my parents. And then you pick it up and then look, you can see along the edge there some dust that the bristles collected. There were other way more involved products available at the time, such as the, I remember the nitty gritty record cleaning system, but that was way beyond my budget at the time and disc washer was my go-to product for years. If you really want to clean a record, I mean really clean it, you'll need to get something much more elaborate and thorough. And this always involves water, distilled water. They say tap water contains contaminants that can get trapped inside the record groove. So. One popular method is using an ultrasound cleaner that's wide enough to fit an LP inside and fitted with a device that slowly rotates the record or records as the ultrasonic vibrations loosen the dirt that's trapped deep inside those grooves. Another method is using a device that applies fluid to the surface of the record as it rotates and usually with a very fine soft brush. And this is often followed by a strong vacuum attachment that thoroughly sucks the fluid right off the surface. And all this must be done without damaging the record, of course. And these noisy devices cost from hundreds to several thousand dollars. I started collecting records again, uh, seriously, about a year ago, and I'm up to over a couple hundred of them, I guess. And I opted for a budget-friendly and popular contraption called a spin clean. You fill it with distilled water and three capfuls of their special secret fluid. And these ultra soft fine pads go in like this. And you then insert the disc between the pads and rotate it by hand three times in one direction and then three times in the other direction. I lift it out of the water and allow it to drip dry over the tank, pinch between the pads. Then you take these soft cloths that are included with the kit that you're supposed to wipe the wet record with and then allow to air dry. It appears to work fine and the water does get pretty dirty after a dozen or so cleanings. A friend of mine recently gave me an interesting record cleaning device called a vinyl vac and this is a really low budget alternative to one of those pricey record vacuum machines. After washing a record in the spin clean, you're supposed to put the wet disc on a turntable platter and then rotate the platter by hand as you use the vinyl vac to suck the water and any dirt that's still on the surface. I brought my shop vac in from the garage and I'm going to attach its hose to the end of the vinyl vac. Hold on a minute. It doesn't fit properly. You know, the end where you attach the vinyl vac to the hose is too big and it falls out. I, I went to my garage and looked for some other possible hoses or ways to attach it and I couldn't find anything. Well then, here is my quick verdict on the vinyl vac. It is utter and complete useless garbage, rubbish and junk. This was record cleaning interruptus. Sorry, everybody.